Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday. Now in this series, we take your viewer submitted videos, we pop them up on the screen behind me, we take a look at them and try to offer some lifting technique advice uh, to try to make y'all more efficient lifters. If you're interested in submitting, go ahead and click the annotation on screen right now and that'll take you to a link that gives you all of the rules for submission. Now, last week, we left off with Ben. And uh, Ben says he's about 20 years old, never competed before, weighs 105, and he says that one of his arms seems to shoot up. So you can see definitely that right side gets a little bit loose. Whoa, that's a big one, there we go. So his right side gets a, a little bit out of position, and I think that's probably the biggest thing that's happening here, and that's why we seem, uh, seem to have one arm shooting up. Now, let's start from the start. So the unrack, First and foremost, you can see he's protracting. His shoulders have to come forward pretty far to start off with. So I think that you would benefit from potentially a lower height uh, for your unrack so that you can maintain more tension and tightness in your upper back. It also looks like your grip is quite narrow here. So with these long deadlifter arms that you've got, might be beneficial to play with a bit of a wider grip. At least try it out. Maybe put it in as an accessory exercise uh, and see how that works for you. But, all right, so the unrack, see how we protract the shoulders? We're kind of losing that nice tight upper back position that we worked so hard to create in the setup. Now, when we go to press, number one, we're getting a little bit loose when we sink into the chest just a tiny bit. It's not the the end of the world um, but what's happening here is we can see this the bar kind of wings out right there right the bar wings out on the right side and what's happening is we're losing stability and position in that shoulder blade on the right side so really focus on having a little bit of patience through the initial phase of the range of motion I talk about this a lot both in the squat and the deadlift and it also does apply to the bench believe it or not so if you can keep that back nice and tight think about keeping good position for the first little bit of the range of motion and then kind of accelerate once you get past about 90 degrees or through the sticking point or where the sticking point would be, I think that'll help us, right? Because what, what's happening is we're elevating that shoulder, we're kind of losing position, and then that shoulder ends up out here. Really tough to lock out from that kind of leverage. Also, when we lock out there, we're even looser in the shoulders, right? So we're kind of relaxing the upper back, reaching, protracting the shoulder blades again. We have to try to stay tight between reps. There's a couple things that we can do better there. The biggest of which is just, we gotta get tighter in the shoulders. We have to get more attracted and depressed. And I think that's gonna do a lot for you. Up next, we have Mark. Uh, Mark says he's been powerlifting for one or two years. Uh, and he says he has to pull himself into the bar to stay tight in his back. It sounds like you kind of know what you need to do here, Mark. And honestly, you just gotta do it. You gotta be patient, you gotta practice. You have to uh, put in the repetitions, especially if you know what you need to do, do it. Figure out how, like it sounds like you have an idea of what you need to do in terms of pulling yourself into the bar. Now there's a couple position notes that I'm gonna make here. Number one is that your knees are coming a little bit too far forward uh, and we're kind of kind of rounded out in the back. I think you could kind of push your butt out this way and see a little bit more extension there as well. The knees are gonna come back. So instead of your legs being here, you're gonna kind of be more at like this angle, but you're gonna end up with a flatter back, if that makes sense. So that can help with the positioning off the floor and then we'll be a little bit more consistent through lockout. Now, when we get to this second rep, why didn't you, uh, why didn't you raise your hips and pull yourself into tension again, right? Straighten the legs, push your hips up, find your back position and then pull yourself back in. You said yourself, you need to pull yourself into the bar to stay tight, so why did we start this second rep with no pulling of the tension? We're just getting lazy, right? So especially when you're, uh, when you're just starting with lifting and when you are doing higher rep sets, take your time, slow things down. You don't need to rush through just because it's a set of five or a set of six slow it down that's an opportunity to practice six perfect reps right I, I understand that obviously when things get heavy when we start to uh, push ourselves and become fatigued the technique will break down and that's okay but if we're not doing the first few reps um, with with good and consistent technique good technique is maybe a bit of a misnomer but um, 
if we're not creating consistent repeatable technique that is efficient for you as an individual there to be a little bit more nuanced um, then uh, you're just losing the opportunity to practice and I think that that's honestly a large part of what training is is practice so when we see things like this you're just rushing it man I feel like it based on your email and what you told me you need to do you know what you need to do you just have to do it and practice it and be more consistent all right uh, Montes Mantis I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. I apologize. Uh, this is the, the running theme of Form Check Friday. I have no idea how to pronounce people's names, but I do my best. All right. Um, so he says he tried low bar. It was a bit uncomfortable. Um, so this is some high bar squats. Uh, this is a set of five around 75 to 80%. So I think in terms of how, you know, in terms of high bar squats, these look pretty fantastic. Man. One thing I would play with is maybe widening the stance just a tiny bit. I also would think twice about these shoes right it looks like we got a big sort of puffy heel and it looks like we're getting really far on the toes as we go through the reps right you can see into the bottom the first rep is actually almost perfect right because the heels stay down we stay nice and flat and planted as we go through the set you can see the heels start to pick up more and more we start to get pulled forward a little bit and um I think that like a heel, a properly heeled lifting shoe, um, or maybe even just flat feet, um, lifting your socks, sock feet, if you will, um, can help. Now, in terms of low bar, I do think that you could probably have a really good low bar squat. Uh, chances are that, you know, as a, as a lower mid bar squatter myself, when I do high bar, it's very uncomfortable. So in most cases, making changes to your technique is going to take some time, some energy and some effort to get used to. Um, so it's not uncommon to see uh, the first time you try a different um, technique or a, a, a slight change to your lifting. It's not uncommon to see that be a little bit awkward, be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, if it's something that is actually worth pursuing, then you know you want to do that for a period of time to actually give it a chance to see uh, if that's a way that's going to allow you to progress. So um, one other thing I think is we could maintain a tiny bit more tension in the bottom position in some of these reps. We're starting to see some looseness in the back as we go through. Um, so I think, you know, specifically, if I can get this to pause, there we go, uh, in the upper back, right? So we start to see if we just watch the upper back and where the bar is um, on, uh, on Montes' back. We can see that the upper back loosens momentarily in the bottom. We are seeing that bar kind of shift around a little bit. Now, one of the things we can do here, I can see at the top, you actually opened your hand. So again, we wanna to try to maintain this tension, this contraction, and this tightness um, in terms of what the, sh you know, the shelf. If you watch our, our squat how-to video um, that we put out recently, pretty proud of that one actually. If you watch that video, you can see um, where we talk about building the shelf and how important it is that we maintain that nice, tight, consistent contraction there throughout all of our squats. So that's one thing I want you to work on. Let's, we'll, we'll do a quick recap for you here. Um, play with your stance. I think a little bit wider might be a bit more comfortable. Just a little bit though. Um, number two, reinvestigate these shoes. See if you can find a heeled lifting shoe or squat in your feet, um, sort of barefoot or sock feet kind of thing. Um, and lastly, let's work on this bar tightness. There's nothing to say that a high bar squat isn't um, you know, the way that you should squat, but we can be tighter here throughout the set. So let's work on keeping that upper back a little tighter. Next up we have Amon. And Amon is doing some bench press. Um, says he's been powerlifting for four months. This is a triple at eight. And he says his bench isn't getting any better. So it's not progressing at the same rate as his other lifts. Honestly, this is not that uncommon for novice powerlifters. Um, I think a lot of the times, not only is bench the sort of least intuitive of the lifts, um, I've heard I've heard it uh, put forth before that bench should have or does have the uh, the sort of highest learning curve, right? A lot of the times with normal human movement, we do things that are squats and deadlifts. We don't usually do. There aren't many sort of natural naturally occurring situations um, during our adolescence where we're doing a bench press movement. So it can take some time to learn. Now that's that's one thing. The other thing is. 
Um, it doesn't look like you're doing a whole lot wrong technically. It looks like we're, we're in a pretty good position here. Uh, we're not over tucking the elbows are in a good position. The touch point's nice and consistent. We're not like sinking in or losing too much tension in the back. So I'd say you have a really good base uh, in terms of what you're doing here technically. Uh, the unrack looks nice and tight. One thing I would maybe do is just let the wrists cock back a little bit more. So right now you're very straight through the wrist uh, and that's probably because the bar is a little higher up in your hand. If you can bring that bar a little lower down in your hand and let the wrist go back a little, that could help uh, with bar path consistency off the chest and some of those things. But the number one thing I think you probably need to investigate is how you're programming for your bench press. Now I'm assuming you're doing some sort of novice program. Um, Perhaps you're even doing our 16-week uh, our program. If you're not, we have a free 16-week program at calgarybarbell.com. Uh, go ahead and check that out. If you're doing a novice program, a lot of the sort of cookie cutter novice programs, uh, 531 comes to mind because that was my first program. It just simply for a lot of people does not have enough practice or enough volume to drive that much progress in the bench. So in a lot of cases, we simply need to be doing more bench work. And also in a lot of cases, that means probably benching more days per week. So that would be something I would investigate is what your frequency is. How often are you benching throughout a given week of training? You could probably add in uh, one more bench day and it might uh, might help quite a bit. It's provided that you're, you're not uh, super beat up or that your shoulders and elbows and things like that aren't hurting. Uh, I'm gonna guess because you didn't mention it that it's probably not. So you could probably add some more volume, some more stress, some more stimulus. So hopefully that helps. All right, next up we have Philip. He's doing some deadlifts. And uh, Philip basically just said that he's been powerlifting for seven months. So. Let's take a look at this. Now, the first thing we notice obviously on this first lift is this change of height in the hips, right? So we're seeing a loss of position. We're seeing the hips shoot up a little bit. Um, and I bet if we were watching from the side, we'd be seeing the back round out a little bit. Not inherently a bad thing. There's probably, there's one of two things that I would say is gonna be the issue when we see the hips shoot up like that. Number one, maybe we should be starting the hips higher. Number two, Maybe we should be keeping the hips start position where it is, but being more patient so that when we start the lift, the hips don't shift. Now, the next thing we're seeing here, really quick sort of barely lockouts. There's a few here where we're definitely short of lockout would be red lights in a powerlifting competition. That one, um, that one, like we're not all the way through. I want you to fully extend your hips, stand all the way up, lock your knees, get the bar locked out. You can see that as the technique breaks down, as the set breaks down, we're seeing more and more flexion in the low back. And when we see that flexion in the low back, a lot of times what suffers is the ability to finish the lockout. That's where things get really tough. So you're kind of getting to like a half locked out position. And not only are we going to be in a disadvantaged position for lockout, but we're also not training it fully. So if we're going to be a round back puller, we're going to have uh, sort of a, a tougher time locking out. We need to be making sure we're training that lockout every single rep See there, we get really, really stuck on the lockout and then we barely maybe get through. So a few things there. Number one, either start your hips higher or be more patient out of the bottom so we don't see the hips rise. Number two, make sure we're finishing our lockouts. Those are gonna be the biggest things that I will recommend for you, Philip. All right, now we have Matej. Uh, again, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, Matej has been lifting for a year and a half, uh, getting back on track after quarantine. He says he has some issues with what he calls chicken wings and his hips shooting up. So there's a relatively common things we've seen in the squat. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually just let this play. We're going to ask everybody watching this to head on down to the comments section below. And I would like you to leave your constructive criticism for our boy Matej here. Anything that you think might help him improve um, any any sort of comments or critiques or cues that you really like to help deal with these specific um, issues. If you have these issues or you know somebody who has or coach somebody who has, go ahead and leave that in the comments below and uh, we will start next episode with Matej and I will give my critique on what I think he can do. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Make sure to stay tuned every Friday for our form checks and head over to twitch.tv slash Calgary Barbell if you want to follow along for our live stream form checks that also happen every Friday. We'll see you all in the next video.